Hi, everybody. This is Cindy Kennedy, and you are listening to another episode of Living with Lyme. We have a wonderful expert today, and I'm excited about her topic. She is actually um, an, an, an amazing speaker. She is also captivating. So ready? I'm going to put my glasses on so I can read this bio. We are talking to Dr. Roseanne Kapana Hodge, and she is a renowned psychologist. She is the founder of Dr. Roseanne and Associates, and she is also the founder and director of a program called the Originator of the 360 Reboot Intensive Therapy Program. She comes to us from Ridgefield, Connecticut, and uh, we're going to learn about all kinds of emotional and psychiatric educational information, as well as her programs. Uh, you can find her at Dr. Roseanne with two N's dot com. And uh, we're going to learn a lot about neuro and biofeedback, as well as how she incorporates integrative wellness into her program. Welcome aboard, Dr. Roseanne. Well, thanks for having me, Cindy. So <laughs> I'll have to be extra captivating today you because now be you laid that down. You, you are. You are. <laughs> You know, we chatted a lot before we started our recording here, and, um, you know, I think that it's amazing what you're doing, because you, you're you in Connecticut, even though you're a, a bit away from me, and up here in Massachusetts, we cannot find good providers, like with the program and things that you're doing. So give us, uh, give us a kind of a synopsis of why people come to you, uh, what is your program about, and then we'll go from there. Thank you. So I'm going to say this before I kind of talk about myself. Um, I am in the active process of creating a program, a CEU-based program um, for other mental health providers to learn this information because there is a complete void all over the world um, for mental health providers treating people with Lyme disease, infectious disease, you know, and PNs and pandas. And there's really not a platform. When I do do trainings, people do flock to them. Um, and what I realized had to happen is I, I need to create my own trainings and provide CUs for them because people want them. They um, need them. So they need, they need them. Them. Incredible information. That's where this podcast came from. Yeah. And, you know, whether mental health providers realize it or not, they are the number one uh, frontline treaters. It is not the medical people. It is the mental health people. Because where does everybody end up with chronic Lyme, you know, pans and pandas, brain inflammation, they wind up in a mental health office. So, um, and so we need to really change that and provide that education, which is why it's so valuable what you're doing, Cindy, because we're providing a valuable information and um, I believe in how we're going to change the system is by working backwards right we're going to start um, not by saying okay medical community come on board because guess what you know I've been working with people with Lyme disease for 22 years and it's actually worse now than it was 22 years ago because 22 years ago you could get long-term antibiotics not that that's the only healing methodology pretty darn easily now you know, they treat you like you're an opioid act addict trying to get that. So we need to come at this in a different way and take a grassroots approach. And I mean, the best part of what's happening in every aspect of the people that I try to help as a psychologist is I love Google. I love the internet because knowledge is powerful power. And, you know, my folks with um, Lyme disease and pans and pandas and my autism moms, I mean, they are the smartest, most well-educated people. And they come in and, you know, we educate each other. And I learned so much from them. And I know they learn from me because um, I'm learning every day and making sure that I educate myself because this is such an evolution. So, so I am doing my part as one of my biggest goals as a human being is to train other mental health professionals in understanding what happens with brain inflammation, why there's so many mental health problems in every group, um, and what we can do about it, because we can actually do something, and we're not talking enough in mental health in related to Lyme, in that there is hope, 
and there is things that you can do. So, um, cause I am fortunate enough to be on a healing team every day, um, and help people heal. So, and that's, what we're going to kind of talk about. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. what's the program? What's the reboot? Yeah. So, so, you know, I am really, you know, an integrative mental health expert. Um, and we spend a lot of time with pediatrics, which I tell people is 25 and under, but we treat all ages, moms with babies to elderly. We have a lot of elderly folks with um, infectious disease. Cause I like to tell people, I'm not one of those people that thinks everybody has infectious disease, but guess what? Uh, I'm seeing that. So, um, and we'll talk about some of the tools that I use to, to see that. So, you know, I use a lot of holistic tools and it evolved into this program of 360 reboot because I was treating people and I still am locally, but more and more people were finding me. So it started out back in the day, right? Cause I've been actually working in mental health for almost 30 years and have helped thousands of people recover um, from some of the most chronic, you know, issues like Lyme, but also ADHD, anxiety disorder, depression, concussion. I do a lot of concussion work. Um, and people would fly in and say, Hey, Roseanne, I'm going to come out and see ya. And so I really needed to create a program that had all the pieces that I knew. And when I thought about it, it's about rebooting the system, right? Starting from ground zero. So my program incorporates not just mental health care and intensive psychotherapy, but our brain based So neurofeedback, biofeedback, physical exercises, brain, um, body work, and uh, integrative physician care. Um, sometimes it's a naturopath and there's always nutrition in that, right? So incorporates all those pieces that I believe are the foundation of healing. And we do it in a very intense way where people come in for either 10 straight days or uh, 10 days over 14 days, right? Over a two week period. And, you know, as I like to say, we just therapize you up um, for four to six hours. It's very unique and individualized for every single person. Uh, some person may, for example, you know, it's not unusual for me to get a child with autism and uh, had previously active pans. So they might have a social skill issue and they might have a motor coordination issue. So we might do intensive occupational therapy over the two weeks with intensive social skills, um, as well as all the other pieces and parenting work. So it's really what, what are the core issues and, you know, how I got involved in all of these brain-based treatments is that right from day one, I was the psychologist who took complex, complex cases, lots of layers. Um, and anybody who works in mental health today knows that's sort of the norm because guess what? Most people have infectious disease. <laughs> I mean, it's not just Lyme. Lyme sometimes starts the party and then other things say, I'm coming to this party, like Epstein-Barr and herpes 6 and mold gets in there and then the system starts shutting down. So, um, so you know, people get sick and then they don't make the connection to their mental health. And so when I started out and I had these increasingly complex cases, medication not only never worked, it actually always worsened it. And it didn't matter if it was a child, it didn't matter if it was an adult. And so at our center, one of the key pieces is we believe that um, medication is often ineffective and probably overused about 97 to 98% of the time. What kind of uh, medication? Psychiatric you... medication. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you, Cindy, for clarifying that. So when it comes to Lyme disease, you do what you need to do. There is never a judgment on that. You align yourself with practitioners that help you. If it's antibiotics, do it. If it's herbals, do it. If it's working with a Reiki person, do it. You know, there's, there's no limitations on healing and nobody should put that. But when it really comes to mental health, not everybody has a biochemical problem. And what does medication do? changes biochemistry. So you can't use that as a solution if, you're, if your core, your root cause, and I know you understand this, Cindy. Right. Your root Causes cause. Are really an important factor because you don't want to just be putting a Band-Aid on, on an issue. It's critical right? So nobody wants to get to the root cause. Sometimes it is physical. Most of the time it's physical and mental health, right? And that's a big part of where I'm trying to help educate other professionals. Um, and, and I think people that are sick, or they know that, right? And they go in and they say, well, you know, gosh, 
I've, I've had this stomach ache for like six months and they're like, Oh, it's, you know, it's just this, try that, try this. And that doesn't work. And then, you know, they never really get to it. Do you know how many times I've known somebody to have, um, one of my favorite stories is somebody came to me for, uh, bringing a child and their other child, she said, Hey, Roseanne, I know, you know, so much about health. And this was a long, long time ago, maybe 10 years ago. And she said, you know, let's call him Fred. Fred had food poisoning and he has never recovered. And it's been six months. The kid was a straight A student. I mean, this is a really easy dramatic case, right? Like I'm not a rocket scientist. This is what I don't understand about mental health and, and medical <laughs> uh, common sense. Okay. So he literally never had a problem. Straight A student has then missed 37 days of school in six months. So went to every gastro and I said, I know exactly what happened. You, you have a parasite and it's going to be a less common parasite. And I have the person who can do a run a kit and do a DNA analysis. And she goes, yeah, but yeah, but I went to this person. I went to the New York city and I was like, do you want to heal? Yes. Do you trust me? Yes. You need to go to this in two weeks identified it was a parasite treated never a problem ever again what would have happened to that kid he would have been sent to a psychologist because it must have been mental health right yeah, right so he hurts because you are yeah. anxious yeah and no history a sudden onset i try to say this everywhere a sudden onset we say this in the pans community pans and lime needs to merge together so we're more powerful a sudden onset of a, a, a problem is not normal and certainly a sudden onset of a mental health problem is not normal. It does not mean you're schizophrenic or some type of other dramatic thing, which is much more of a rarer condition. So that root cause was so critical. So I am somebody, what I do is I get to the root cause, whether it's physical, emotional, behavioral, whatever that root cause is stemming from. And what is happening is there's typically not one thing in these complex cases. And so you have to really take um, a holistic view and, and look at people with a W and look all around. Right, um, right. I use holistic with an H therapies. So people were coming, they were going on meds and they were getting worse. They were reacting. And <clears throat> how I got into this neurofeedback a long time ago is a, a story of a boy named Alec. And Alec came to me and had the worst case of ADHD I've ever seen in my life. Uh, if you could visualize that if I turned my head, he literally would be climbing a, up a wall. He was brilliant. He had a 99% IQ, right? So that means like 99% of people his age don't have his IQ. <laughs> like he's in the one percentile like he's you know he's just so so bright and he was non-functional he looked like he was having seizures his body was flailing around he he couldn't pay attention and he had every opportunity in life including schools he was thrown out of multiple schools um his parents were beside himself and so somebody said Roseanne's your girl because she's that girl and you know I met with him and his mom said, I'm going to do medication. And of course, what happened? He reacted. He wound up getting cardiac problems. And so she was forced to look for alternative. And at this point, I already was alternative. I was talking about diet. And, you know, I've always, I'm the daughter of Italian immigrants. And so food is healing. Um, and I didn't know that, that not everybody in America felt that way. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people have a bad relationship with food. Yeah. Yeah. And so thankfully it's gotten so much easier to eat healthy food, Cindy, right? It um, has. It has. So she called me and she said, Roseanne, should I do neurofeedback? There's this guy like an hour and a half away. And I said to her, yes, there's so much research, so much research. I mean, neurofeedback today is almost 50 years old or about 50 years old and has tens of thousands of research studies, 3,000 are peer reviewed. So what happened to this boy, Alec, was a miracle. He comes up to me on the street about eight months later, looks me in the eye and, and shakes my hand and says, how you doing, Dr. Roseanne? And I turned to the mom, I'm sure I used an ex expletive, and said, what the heck are you doing? What are you doing? And she said, neurofeedback. And then I completely did 
a hard shift wow. and I went and had to get trained in it. And it is an unbelievably powerful tool. I use it with anxiety, depression. I use it to treat the neurocognitive symptoms of Lyme, like word retrieval. Um, I, um, my certifying board, um, for neurofeedback considers me the expert because guess what? I am the only expert <laughs> um, in neurofeedback and the use of with Lyme and Pans and Pandas and people are wanting the information. There are people all over the world are calling me right. with neurofeedback trying to help people. Right. So he, this boy, Alec, just changed my world and he's, he's an adult now and we have our own relationship <laughs> and he texts me and he's just a special human being. I mean, That's he's great. really pretty amazing well, because it unlocked his potential. He didn't right. have Lyme. He didn't have Lyme, but there was a lot going on. Um, and then even long before that, I mentioned my first Lyme, chronic Lyme person was 22 years ago. And, you know, I help people with Lyme and pans and pandas all over. Um, I'm not, I don't cure your Lyme, but I'm, like I said, a member of the healing team. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's Lyme doesn't matter if it's anxiety. It doesn't matter if it's autism. If you don't calm that nervous system down, your body physiologically will not heal. And so it doesn't mean that you're experiencing psychological stress, which guess what? You are. And I forgot to tell everybody I'm a mom of a kid with chronic Lyme and pants. So I get the psychological stress, um, as, as being in the house. Right. But, um, but your nervous system creates a stress response in when the bacteria is there, when the viruses are there, right? When the mold is there, when the food sensitivities. And if you're not caring for the nervous system, it will not allow the body to heal. Um, one of the most exciting things that has that happened, I, and I co-wrote a book called Brain Under Attack um, with a wonderful organization or for a, a, a nonprofit called Epidemic Answers. And they're all about children's physical and mental health and healing and root causes. And they have one of the best websites out there. So epidemicanswers.org. We wrote this book, Brain Under Attack, and we had different professionals who treat Lyme and pans and pandas in there. And I didn't know it, but when they submitted their answers, they all had a unified theme that they now realize that if the emotional piece, the psychological piece, right, is not addressed, the healing no matter how awesome they were at medical people would not happen. So it was music to my ears. Cause honestly I was having that enlightenment because I've been in this for so long. And I would say to people, go and do your antibiotics, go and do your cow go and do your cling heart and then come back to me. Um, and it wasn't always a slam dunk. And now we just take a much more, we take a multifaceted approach and we do it together. And there's such a platform that has to happen, including nutrition, right? And you know all about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's so it's critical. Critical. It's critical. critical. You have yeah. to nourish all your cells. And oh. your brain being mostly fat, you've got to nourish that brain. So just for everybody's knowledge, um, just tell us what the acronym of PANS and PANDAS mean. Yeah. I mean, how does that, uh, how does that occur? Oh, so thank you. So um, PANS and PANDAS is pediatric um, neuropsychiatric syndrome, and PANS is any infection, um, also environmental cause, but PANDAS with the S um, is the one for strep. Mm -hmm. So what happens in both of those, and I think we should just call it PANS, they saw it also referred to as disease of the basal ganglia, um, uh, autoimmune encephalopathy. So in these situations, just like Lyme, and Lyme is one of the biggest causes of pans. So Lyme's, Lyme and Epstein-Barr are two of the top infectious disease that can trigger. Um, so I'll tell you what that looks like. And how about, we now, how about mold? Does mold? Mold? Work? Yeah. Here's what happens with mold. Mold, like I said, mold says, hey, I'm going to that party because the door's open. Oh, the right? party. The party. Yeah, they, it decides to come to the party. Not that I want to make it a cool place because we don't want to make it a cool place. Yeah. But once your system breaks down, right, and anybody who can relate to this, it, even if you don't have Lyme, like let's say you get bronchitis early in the winter here in the Northeast, right? Your 
you're in trouble because that means you're gonna your immune system's gonna be down and you're more likely to get other infections that season, right? So what do you do? You do immune boosting, you try to really do lots of things, you know, great antioxidants, eat really, really extra clean, and usually you can get kind of through it. So when mold comes in, it's not the cause. There's often a virus or Lyme in there and it comes in just like food sensitivities. I mean, I'm sure your listeners or many people, including myself, never had food sensitivities. And then, you know, you get this, right? I got pneumonia and then boom, I can no longer have dairy. That's okay. Cause I already was eliminating it. Um, so what happens in your immune system, you need to clear out all the things that um, don't give it the nutrients uh, and that more likely to increase. So when it comes with pans and pandas, it's your, an infectious component typically comes in. Um, flu is also a big one. People believe vaccinations. But again, I don't think vaccinations. I think there's something else in your system and that just takes you down, right? So, um, so the vaccination and, went to the party. The vaccination went to the party. You're oh, speaking my love language. I get it. You know what I mean? Well, Thank I love you. analogies. Yeah. I use yeah. analogies all the time. Right. So um, It makes sense to me. I don't know if it makes sense to anybody yeah, else. But, <laughs> but people it, agree. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's shocking sometimes for people with Lyme to realize that they have multiple things going on. I don't know anybody that doesn't have multiple infections, whether it's co-infections of bacterial, right? So my kid has nine co-infections that took about eight years to show up on Igenix testing, which I think is awesome testing, but the nature of the virus is it takes that long for those suckers to show up, right? Because <laughs> right. they're so genetically involved, evolved and know how to hide. So the body has this mis in pans and pandas, the body has a misdirected immune response and starts attacking itself. And when that happens, you have brain inflammation. So the brain inflammation is what causes these neurocognitive and neuropsychiatric symptoms. Now, the definition of PANS is a sudden onset, but we really are evolving and understanding what that looks like. So there is, if you've ever seen um, the great movie called, you know, My Kid Is Not Crazy, and you can, you can watch it, um, you know, you can download it and watch it. It's a great, great movie. Um, that is, the whole movie is sudden onset. Like, neurotypical kids, um, which there aren't that many of <laughs> in the world, because 54.2% 54 of the U.S. population of children have a physical or a mental health problem. Oh, that's so, crazy. But it's genetic evolution. It's environmental toxins. It's, it's so many factors. There's not one, right? Autism through the roof. There's a lot of factors. So the body has this misdirected immune response. You get the inflammation. And then for some people, it's a sudden overnight. But for most people, we're really starting to understand that you can have pre-existing conditions, right, which complicate the diagnosis, but you also can have what we call soft signs, like a slow evolution. And you will see this in Lyme. And so when I'm saying this, this is, this is very Lyme. The, the, the pieces are very much the same. So you can have... Um, you might have gotten bitten by a tick, right? And, you know, we know ticks, you know, the, this stuff can lay, the bacteria can lay dormant for decades and you have to have a breaking of the blood-brain barrier for it to get into the brain and start kind of causing and wreaking its havoc. And there's lots of reasons why people have a breaking of the blood-brain barrier. Um, and so you, you might get bitten by a tick, you might not react, right? Because I heard of people not reacting. Um, I don't know too many of those people. <laughs> and, well, by the time they get to you, there's been time in between. Yes. Know? And truly, we don't know. We really we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. And there's, we, it's, I'm not sure. I do believe we're going to know. Um, we need, we need like some major players to change what we are learning and the research behind what happens. Um, but there's so much evolutionary stuff going on in people's physiology. It's so right, hard right. to understand. And I think that's really confusing and perplexing to people. So much misinformation about is, Lyme disease. There is. It's and unbelievable. There's so, much, there's so yeah. much that we're finding that impacts our uh, immune system. You know, and a lot of people with Lyme, sure. you know, we're talking about neuroinflammation. That is probably one of the hardest things because 
-hmm. Not only is the person feeling either physical and the psychiatric uh, side effects of that, but the family is watching this happen. Of course. Yeah. And then they feel, I bet you, well, I'm just making an assumption here and you can tell me if I'm wrong. The parents feel like they're doing something wrong. Is oh, that- you're, you're on the money. And so, you know, what happens is when it's a sudden onset, which is so frightening, so, so frightening when your kid overnight develops um, rage or OCD, or completely regresses, like they could write, and then now they can't, or they start wetting themselves. I mean, these are very common scenarios, right? Can't get out of bed. But for a lot of people, they had something there, or it was a slow, right? So they start getting a little anxious. And then, and then what I'm seeing is they get a second infection, the flu, uh, just a cold, another tick bite, whatever it is, or somebody, a strep, then strep comes in, um, and then boom, and dramatic increase. And these are the harder cases because people are like, well, he already had anxiety. Or a lot, you know, they're now estimating that uh, up, upwards of 35% of children with autism really have pans or pandas. And I'm seeing that. I'm seeing that. I think it's even higher than that. There's so many factors in it. But when you have, as a mom of a child with Lyme disease, and I already was working for a decade with people with Lyme disease and understanding it, and my guy only got it when he was 22 months old, and so there's a lot of pieces in that. But you go in, you ask for help, you say, I mean, this is the story that I hear, my own story being that, right, is that you come in and you're like, help me. I mean, he was normal, now he's not. They are not addressing the physical, right? And that's not commonly what's happened. These parents are using awesome tools like Facebook groups. I really encourage people to get into some of these Facebook groups or just information powerhouses, um, finding people that are, you know, you waste your time in Lyme disease going to a not a Lyme provider. Forget about Lyme literate. We're talking specialist. Right. End of story. Do what you got to do because it's not uncommon. So we know just with a simple Lyme diagnosis that most people are seeing five to seven professionals. I mean, how unacceptable is that? But people are coming to me. My world record was I was the 55th person they saw. 55th. Wow, that's, now, uh, that's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. unacceptable. Exactly. But most people are coming to me with 10 or more providers, including mental health. And, um, and this is why I feel that, you know, we really need to, you know, treat, get people to identify it and then get them to the right person, you know? So, um, and that's just critical. Really well, what critical. you're just doing now is you're explaining, you know, to many people what they're experiencing, you're putting it into words that they can understand because they need to take this information and they need to move forward. You yeah. Know, if you just lay down, you're just going to, you know, lay down, yeah. and roll over. You don't want to do that. You really no. want to learn, take this information and go forward. You know, you, you supply, um, therapies, yes. neurofeedback, biofeedback and PEMF. No, PEMC. Yes. No, I do PMF. Yes. Oh, oh, oh F. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Oh, all right. F. F. You're yes. gonna tell us. Tell us. Tell sure. us. Break those down because sure. I'm not uh, completely, um, you know, educated in the, these type of uh, procedures or you know, um, helpful, helpful therapies. So, so give it to us. I'll give it to you. I'll try to. Give it to me, baby. I I could talk about this and I could talk about Lyme all day long. So then you put them together. I could, I could sit here for eight hours. So these are things that I'm really passionate about. And, and um, what I love about the brain-based therapies, neurofeedback, biofeedback, PMF, these things can be really game changers in uh, a treatment plan because, or in people's health journey, because they calm the nervous system down. I cannot say this enough. So you're not able to heal. You're also physically or emotionally access your rational brain if your nervous system is overactivated, because there's only there's only uh, three things that can happen when your nervous system goes into overdrive, a hyper state. Uh, fight, flight, or freeze. And that means you're stuck. And that stuck looks that way in healing, 
right? So like you're working with an awesome line person, but you're not getting better. It's because your nervous system's overactivated. It's also because you're not detoxing and the, and the waste products are there. So that's part of it too. But, um, and you have to bring in healing. So these therapies, regardless of whether you have Lyme or not, we work with a lot of trauma folk. Um, our second so office is in Sandy Hook, um, and so we worked with a lot of people from the tragedy, uh, always have supported veterans, always supported a lot of people with trauma, um, and tra and all my moms who have trauma from having special needs kids, you know, we love them up. Um, cause I couldn't relate more. Um, but what happens is people come in, I do something called a QEG brain map and the, what happens in mental health is we never look under the hood. Um, we just take a guess and say, Hey, sounds like you got anxiety, which is part of a contributing factor in all of these medical diagnoses that get missed and people go on psych meds when they really aren't anxious. That's a, that's a byproduct of another cause, which could be infectious disease or whatever it is. So when I do a QEG brain map, it tells me very, very clearly what is the health of the brain. And because, you know, this is something I'm an expert in and I've done thousands of these, I can read it and I can, you can see very clearly brain inflammation. You can see long-term effects of chronic disease conditions. You can see nutrient deficiencies. You can see anxiety. You can see ADHD. You can see concussion. Like it doesn't matter if your concussion happened 40 years ago. If it caused damage to the brain, you can see it. Um, and concussions, by the way, should cause damage to the brain. You can see birth trauma. So that becomes my platform. So I, with that, say, oh, you know, hey, looks like you have, uh, you've had long-term Lyme or whatever it is. And then I can make recommendations to the treatment. And again, a very bio-individual approach. But for most people with Lyme, I like to work really concretely through the body. I love to do some biofeedback. I love to do PMF because it's very uh, instantaneous. And so is neurofeedback in calming the nervous system down. But where neurofeedback comes in, I'll explain this to you and kind of really quickly what they are. But Neurofeedback is direct brainwave retraining. So a certain area is not working probably properly. And you know, whether you have current Lyme or you're in a chronic phase where you're like 90%, 80%. I do a lot of work with people who are really physically healed, but sort of have like these lingering effects. Um, what are the top things? Anxiety, fatigue, brain fog, and word retrieval. I would say, and depression too, but usually when you're you're at 80% or better. The depression is not there in the same way. Um, you're not sleeping. You know, I get people sleeping 20 hours a day, 22 hours a day. And of course, you're diagnosed with depression. I'm like, that's not depression. <laughs> that's <laughs> Lyme disease. Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, go. So I want to tell everybody that I have 100% accuracy. And every time that I've told somebody they have Lyme disease with a Q, that I yeah. send him to a medical doctor who is a Lyme specialist, right? I only refer to Lyme specialist. You, again, waste your time um, and you waste your healing, which is could not be more important, right? It, it's so, there's only, when you have active Lyme, you have a lot of brain inflammation. There is only a very short list of things that it could be that could cause that level of brain inflammation. And Lyme is on the top. So, um, so when I do neurofeedback, I can directly train areas that are not working properly. So okay, you got to tell us have, how, cause I'm trying to make a visual here. Yeah. So let me make a visual. So it is basically, I start with a cue. I identify those areas that maybe are underperforming and overperforming. And, um, the simple thing of what it is, it's based on operant conditioning where I reinforce you for producing the right combination of brain waves. So visualize this, you're in front of a computer, nothing comes through the wires, I'm only reinforcing your brain for changing itself, and I reinforce the subconscious, which is in control. Ooh, hold on, can you, okay, sorry, mm -hmm. got a little thing that came up that said my internet connection wasn't good, sorry. Um, so I'm reinforcing the brain for changing and producing a healthy combination of brain waves. So the computer, you, you watch a movie, you're, the movie won't play unless you produce the right combination of brain waves, um, which happens in two to three seconds of the first time you are hooked up um, because your brain your subconscious wants the star and movie to play. <laughs> um, and it also wants all this reinforcement. So 
What a neurofeedback session is, is a workout. Your brain is performing and being healthy for about 30 minutes, two, three times a week. It is a process. Most people who do neurofeedback typically do 40 sessions. Less than 20 is a complete waste of your time. And any practitioner that tells you that, oh, no, give it a try, waste your time. You got to do at least 20 because the brain wants to go back to its unhealthy rhythm. So it's a process of me reinforcing and training your brain to be healthy. Um, it's pretty incredible. It's stable over time. There's lots and lots of research, long-term research as late as 10 years. Um, we just had a big study that six months in 2018, I believe, um, six months later, not only was the brain stable, in many cases, it's actually better. And I can tell you anecdotally, having worked with thousands of people, that I don't really get people, you know, back. Typically, the only reason I get somebody back is they have a head injury after. So um, I always tell everybody, if you get a head injury, go to neurologist, just get checked out, and then call me and come in for neuro. So I'm reinforcing the brain to be healthy, and the brain learns to be at a healthy um, state, and then symptoms disappear, right? So if you're anxious, you know, if the brain fog, the fatigue. Um, so that's part of what neurofeedback is. And then PEMF is based on frequency theory that every disease or condition has a frequency signature. And this is a science that's applied to different things, including food science, but we're not doing food science and it's based on quantum physics. So with the technology that I use, um, and there's all kinds of great technologies available, but I use what works for me and mine is very controllable and symptom specific. So I, it sends a signal to the cell, it disrupts how the cells are talking and comes in with a corrective communication. So what a lot of people are benefiting from, and you see this on Facebook and it's true from PMF, is because it really helps with detoxification but the main goal of what it does is calm the nervous system down. So again, if we use tools to calm the nervous system down, the body says, your, your, actually your natural killer cells say, hey, I actually could go after this bacteria and stop trying to deal with this stress, um, this unknown stressor that's activating the nervous system. And then it starts doing its real job, right? And then biofeedback is learning how to conscientiously control some type of autonomic function, which is the fancy word for your breath, your heart rate, um, your, your body temperature, your skin conductance. And all of those are typically used, again, to calm the nervous system down um, and promote healing. It's used for pain. It's used for changing how your muscles are working. Um, and there's some wonderful, wonderful aspects of biofeedback, but it's, you have to really work at it. You have to think about it where PMF and bio and neurofeedback are much more passive. Um, biofeedback, people say to me all the time, you know, what if I don't believe in it? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you like it. It doesn't matter if you believe in it. If your eyes are open, your brain, your subconscious wants that reinforcement and will change. Um, so some really great tools. And so we now know when we use those tools and if people need straight psychotherapy, which we do, um, talk therapy in our office only happens at the end. It's the candle lighting. So everything is where it needs to be and you light the candles. So if you try to work on your rational thoughts, when your body is completely out of whack, your nervous system is agitated, you can't do good thinking. I mean, it's just common sense. So, so when people are ready to come in to um, work with your practice, what, yeah. what can they expect? What, what happens with the first few visits? So what most people do, so my local peeps, as I like to say, you know, everybody comes in, they have to have a brain map um, for my services. Now we have therapists, psychotherapists that work with people remotely. Um, and obviously you're doing that. That's different. Um, but when you're actually looking for physical treatment in office, so my local people or people, my 360 reboot, they're coming in, they're having a brain map. Um, and then I look at the health of the brain. We look at all the treatment components is there something medical that needs to happen you know where do they live who can I connect them with um, in their state or their town um, 
in that could provide that care. We look at detoxification. So, you know, there's six parts that have to happen in healing. And, uh, you know, I think we don't talk enough about hope and healing um, in Lyme care. And I work with people all the, all the time that get better. Um, I also work with people all the time that are managing it, but managing it at a really, really high level, like 85, 90, 95%. And that's okay. And people need to understand that has to be part of the healing journey. Um, as a mom who had every means um, at her disposal with a kid with Lyme, nobody said to me, this is a marathon, not a sprint. And geez Louise, why are we not telling that to every Lyme patient? I know. So I, I know. went, right, people, Cindy? Right, but people in this day and age, everything has to be fast. It has yeah. to be right there. You know, you turn on the internet, you get an answer to a question. Um, you, know, uh, you know, you need to cook something fast. You know, everything has got to yeah. be fast. There isn't a process of identifying and then learning and what they no one can deal with issues you know and you know so you're right it comes from both ends right so we want it fast but but the providers my experience i mean i was going to world famous providers nobody told me it was a marathon if somebody said hey Roseanne, this is a marathon like stock up make sure you do self-care as a mama um, right. So for people that are listening, like you talk about couples who have Lyme and, you know, how do you take a tag team approach? So I could have conserved some energy <laughs> because every time I did my long term antibiotic, which did help us, don't get me wrong. I thought this was it. This was the cure. Right. And so you rev yourself up, you get all this adrenaline going and then defeat. Right. And every failure is a crush crush right and <clears throat> how horrible right so that's that's me as the mom which I, you know I mean I don't know how many you know any woman out there knows exactly what I'm talking about I don't even have to explain it no offense guys <laughs> <laughs> um but as the individual you get crushed and you think oh my god I'm going back to square one which was isn't the case but you don't know any better so so stop sprinting right so when I really look at what's going on we have to get down to the healing platform. If you're, and it doesn't matter if it's Lyme, autism, learning disabilities is the same healing platform, which is where somewhere in this is an arc, right? There's some kind of connection to all these things. Um, I'm not sure what it is, but I think that we definitely are mutating and changing. And so many people have genetic mutations, including myself. Um, I'm an MTHFR, you know. Right, yeah. You know, 41% yeah. of the population have at least yeah. one gene. Yeah. A variant. Absolutely. So, and there's lots. So, you know, you, you, as I've talked about on this podcast, obviously for me, because I'm helping people with that journey is really getting the nervous system to calm down, addressing the psychological, nothing is going to happen without that. So that is one of the key pieces, but you have to do detoxification, right? So I see lots of people who are, again, physically healed, but they, and are, they're not anxious or depressed, but have cognitive issues. And when I'm starting to understand the connection between the waste products that are left over from medications, the actual bacteria, the viruses, right, the mitotoxins, there has to be a really deep um, work with detoxification, which I think is incredibly lacking in the medical community. I think people are doing a terrible job in that. Um, and I have learned for some of the best detoxers what to do. So um, I am certified in integrative mental health. So, you know, I can help people to agree, but I like to send them to people where that's their job. Um, when people do 360, we, we make that as part of what it is. So the detoxification, you have to get sleep. If you're not sleeping, we're culture of non-sleepers. 90% of detoxification occurs in sleep. End of story, right? Wow. Nervous sleep system. Is an issue. I read it's an that issue. You know, 100% of people with Lyme yeah. have yeah. trouble with sleep. It's either yeah. they can't fall asleep or they wake up or they're feeling wired and then tired, you know, their their adrenal glands are not working as well because they're, you know, slow to wake up and then by the time they wake up, they're revving up and that's when you really need to have it you know, get to the point. Yeah. 
you're, you're getting then, tired. Sleep. And then some people are sleeping 20 hours, but they're not, there's no healing. There's no restoration. So getting the sleep aligned is really critical. You know, looking at what your nutrient deficiencies are. Nobody talks about when your body is, your nervous system is in a hyper state and it's trying to heal, what is it going to do? It's actually going to try to pull from your nutrients and you cannot eat well enough to support that process, right? So like magnesium, we're already magnesium, magnesium deficient, 300 chemical processes. It's a cofactor, means it's a helper. You, you just can't burn through enough magnesium. So anybody knows me knows that I'm like, a super happy person, but ridiculously high energy. And all you have to do is talk about a good food recipe. And I'm like, super excited. Like I just get excited. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm also Italian. If I didn't say that already. All gluten free and dairy free now, but, but your nervous system knows no difference between good and bad stress. It reacts the exact same way. So I really have to, I do daily self care. I do a lot of magnesium. I take three different kinds. I do my PMF every day, seven days a week. Um, I meditate multiple times. You know, I've done hundreds of sessions of neurofeedback, so I don't really need it. Um, I work at so a- You've done more than 20. That's what you're saying. Oh, no, I've done a few hundred sessions. So my brain can optimize. Um, I want to I wanna try that with-, with Oh, you got to come down, Cindy. I want to try that with my eyes because, you know, yes. and I, you know, a lot of people, they're, the hardest part is with brain fog and mm -hmm. you're not thinking clearly, you, the, the, the memory issue mm -hmm. and the word find. Yeah. Is a it's problem. painful. So, painful. So it is because yeah. you feel like you're going, you know, you should be looking for your nursing home. You want to pick the right one because you're absolutely don't want well said. To do that. But mm -hmm. But when it comes down to the level of inflammation and, and that area maybe of memory and speech, mm -hmm. is that a particular area that you find is highly inflamed? Yeah. And actually what happens a lot in the chronic states is that the brain starts turning off because um, particularly the communication area. So when I look at a brain, a QEG is awesome because I can see over the structures and like I'm a total brain nerd, so I'm going to simplify it. But the brain um, is broken down into sections and each section is responsible for really think for, for global things. But then it's broken down very, very specifically into exact neuropsychiatric characteristics. So you can look and see where short term memory is. You can see the limbic system, which, oh my God, Lyme disease loves to get into the emotional control center of the brain. It loves to get in the back of the brain where visual processing is, um, right? It loves to do all kinds of things to people and disrupt their visual centers. Um, so, but I also can see how the brain is talking with itself, which um, I always tell the same story because it's so powerful that the um, Einstein had a genetic defect he didn't in his brain. It wasn't that his structures were bigger or more powerful. It was that he had 400 times the amount of connections between sites. So instead of having, you know, for us in the Northeast, one I-84, I-90 in Massachusetts, he had 400. So he could just process information so rapidly. So, and a lot of times what happens in infectious disease is, yes, I see over the structure, but the communication just goes offline. Um, and particularly for OCD, so, so many people, we have OCD specialists um, uh, on staff and we do a lot of intensives with OCD. Um, but what happens is the back of the brain, which controls self-calming, it's the fail-safe system when you're trying to, stop from freaking out, the back of your brain should flood you with happy brain waves. But a lot of people with infectious disease, it goes offline. And then the brain says, I have to reboot, right? And it keeps trying to reboot. And it actually creates this obsessive compulsive either thinking, which is much more comp um, common than compulsive behaviors. Um, and, and, then be and then people habituate towards that and they start stressing. So when I work on the communication centers for a person with Lyme, it just improves their thinking. They're able to access information. But yes, I mean, I, I know I had a friend 
with chronic, chronic Lyme. And I just saw her the other night and she's doing amazing. Um, but her word retrieval problems were painful, painful. I would want to save her when she was talking. It was so obvious. And that's not uncommon, you know. Um, but I would say the most common thing I see in terms of how Lyme affects the brain is anxiety. Most people have a high level of, you know, and anxiety can be, you know, a pullback and oh, I'm stressed, or it can be um, an agitation and irritation. I mean, it can look very different, but it's really being uncomfortable. Um, and a person may or may not have had that before, but certainly with Lyme, it's always going to worsen, right? So, you know, Lyme loves to pull out whatever kind in your genetic, you know, piece, but it also creates things that were never supposed to be there. Um, you know, it's an interesting thing. So, so that's how the neurofeedback helps those very specific, I can train, I can get right in there and train very specific areas. What is, what does the term neuroplasticity mean? Oh, so when I talk about the neural connections, really I'm talking about neuroplasticity. It's the flexibility of the brain. So how how open is your brain to learning? And there's lots and lots of things people can do besides neurofeedback, especially nutrition. Um, fish oil is one of the best ways you can increase uh, neuroplasticity. If somebody doesn't have um, a fish allergy, it's a requirement when they come here because it's one of the most important things to increase the flexibility of the brain. Um, we know through research that it creates new activity. Um, myelination in the brain and, and helps. So it's an right, awesome so hold thing. On. Hold on one second. I'm going to yeah. take some more fish oil. <laughs> uh, load up, girl. I oh take four God. whoppers like, a day. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it's variable, but the word retrieval, it makes yeah. me crazy. Yeah. And, and then I go down the path. Like I said, oh my yeah. God, is this just the leftover lime? Is it <sighs> well, and you're, you're a woman, Cindy. And so a lot of my women, you know, what happens is Lyme loves to hijack your hormones too, right? So it does all kinds of things in the endocrine system. And so you also don't know, is it kind of a perimenopause? Is it, you know, like there's lots of pieces that happen with that. Um, Lyme just pulls it out. Right. Um, so, but yeah, you're smart and, and you, there is a really a way, you know, neurofeedback is a wonderful way to actually go in and turn on those areas or tamp down. Right. So like I've had kids in complete rages and I do a brain map and you literally can see a brain on fire. You can see like a hot spot, and I can teach the brain to actually tamp down and I just have it just push down and reinforce it. And then boom, the person calms down. Um, in that case, that's always a real active case of infectious disease. They need to pair it with good care or I'm not going to be able to sustain that, you know? So that's really, really, really important. I mean, I think the thing with Lyme people don't get is, you know, it's a lifestyle change. So, you know, diet, you got to be gluten and dairy free, sorry, and sugar free. Wish I could tell you something different. It is what it is, whether you like it or not. Um, <laughs> But you know what? That goes with just about anything. Um, I know. It goes, it goes with so many issues. And if mm -hmm. you listen to Dr. Tom O'Brien, mm -hmm. he is so adamant that gluten just tears holes in uh, in your stomach and in your right. small intestine, actually. And that's where you know a lot of inflammation initiates and you're making antibodies towards food because that's what's getting out there and your yeah. you know, your body doesn't know that type of protein and then Absolutely. all of a sudden these antibodies that were specific become mimics and you have mimicry and now they're making ad antibodies against your thyroid or making antibodies against uh you know your wherever i don't know name name an organ name something yeah. And yeah. then what happened, Cindy? So, so, you know, we know in the United States because, you know, there was the 300, well, there was two lawsuits, um, but we know that our wheat fields are sprayed with um, cancer causing agents, right? So this is a big part of why wheat is there. Regardless of whether you want to believe any of that or whatnot, we know that it does create inflammatory response. So we have to pull out all the pieces that are interfering with healing and wheat and dairy and sugar interfere with healing. End of story. That's just the way it goes. So hopefully, I, you know, I say to people, you know, you're going to do it for at least 90 days. You know, they're going to feel so great. It's going to be easy. So yeah. you know, I've been they need that. 
They need it. What, what it's they so would easy. Say, yeah, I would yeah. say 90 days. They know yeah. there's a limit. In yeah. the beginning, all they have to do is, is okay, I can make 90 days. I, I can yeah. do that. Yeah, sure. But, but if but if we're constantly, you know, reminding them, geez, you know, how you feeling? Mm-hmm. You know, how's your brain fog? How's your sleep? How yeah. your weight? Yeah. And, yeah, people want to see change, and that's that's great. Your program sounds quite intense. Mm-hmm. Um, do you? That's have, why we call it intensive. <laughs> that's right. That's true. Do you have, uh, you know, for people who can't travel to you, yeah. do you have uh, people that can contact uh, in your practice that can give them referrals or, you know. So I am working on a list of other providers. There's nobody who does what I do. I wish I could say that there is, but again, I will get to the point where I'll train other people. Um, I'm working on a list of providers, mental health providers um, in their state who provides, who is a Lyme, not just literate, but really good at Lyme and understanding the emotional impact and can help you. Um, But I have a very small list, but, you know, obviously in the Northeast, um, there are people in every state. And one of the ways that you find people is to contact one of your um, Lyme organizations. Don't ask your physician or ask your Lyme professional, your medical person, who do you recommend? Um, Because if they don't get it, they're going to tell you like just things that are just a waste of your time and, and um, tell you to go on, you know, Xanax, which is only going to interfere with healing. Um, You know, and there's so many amazing and part of the healing platform is, you know, to identify those nutrient deficiencies, but also to find supplements. We have these amazing supplements that are even more effective than medication without side effects, but you need to be a trained person. So, And the biggest thing now is there's uh, functional testing companies that really help identify. Um, My daughter, Kara, and I um, uh, have our practice now. It's Pursue Wellness. You can find us at pursuewellness.us. And we do a lot of specialized testing. And I think that is, it's brilliant because mainstream labs, yes, they they do have a, a big function and we do get a lot of information from them. But being able to go to specialty companies yes. and looking at different aspects, we look at gut health, um, the ability for our stool samples to pick up a whole lot more than the general lab, and then doing nutritional studies that are based on the cells themselves, the white blood cells, the red blood cells. We're not looking at what's in the uh, serum of the blood because just so people know, you can have a high B12 level, but that's not that should not be interpreted as a high B12 in your body, because right. if you go to the cell, Insertion, right. it just might not be in the cell. And then that actually means you need more B12. We need to find out why your bees are not getting into the cell. So what has happened with functional testing, because I've been holistic for, you know, 30 years and is amazing. And, you know, you heard me say, we don't check under the hood. We don't check under the hood in mental health, in health either well. And we have these tools, just like the, I shared the example of somebody who had food poisoning, but then they did specialized stool testing that traditional doctors don't use, and they were able to identify what it was so that it could be treated. These are things that are readily available. Um, unfortunately, sometimes they're not covered by insurance, but the costs have dramatically come down in these years. Um, and they, you know, you need to identify what you're missing and what your body needs, because again, disease states rob uh, nutrients, but also we have these genetic mutations, which is very important to identify because most of them have to do with um, how your body is utilizing nutrients. So right. you could be trying, you could be doing the best protocol, the best protocol, but if you have an underlying piece and it's not just one root cause, but these nutrients are so critical, it's really important. Um, right. And and there's a solution for it. You know, you well, do the is. testing and you... Yeah, you, you got to reach stuff. out. Right. Yeah. I did a podcast. Uh, it's uh, the one prior to yours here with Emily Givler, and she is a genetic nutritionist. And 
she has taught me a tremendous amount and I'm working with uh, her organization and doing methyl genetic testing and it's these enzyme pathways. Right. You know, I, it's like sometimes- And that's what yeah. MTHFR is. You know, you're, you're, you're lacking an enzyme to prop, you know, properly utilize the B vitamins and there are nine right. of them. Right. So, and your nervous system can't work properly without right. the B vitamins. Right. They'll dismiss it. Right. You know, every physician dismissed your low vitamin D, your hormone system cannot work properly without vitamin D. So then that goes out of whack. Guess what? You're going to have mental health problems. Right. So, right. you know, and, and the scope of mental health, I mean, it, we're talking about functionality, just like Lyme. Some people are down, some people are working every day. Um, and some people are just living in like, it's terrible. So, right. Right. you know, and these people, are pieces. It yeah. feels very overwhelming, but I break it down into six parts and you just, you know, I wish you could say that you can only choose one, but you, you start with how you, what you're putting in your mouth. Cause guess what? What you put in your mouth affects your brain and your body. <gasps> Shocking. 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 <laughs> and no, I don't hang out with anybody eating Cheetos. I mean, I just don't. You're not no. coming to the Hodges with Cheetos. I mean, no. it's just not happening. That's it's okay. not brain food. You need nutrients, your body, right. and especially with Lyme and pans and pandas, you need everything. You need to buck up. You need to power up and take every nutrient, take every tool that you possibly can and get serious about right, healing. Right. That is know? a great take home. And it really does start, you know, in, uh, in your refrigerator. So it's good yeah. to, to learn. And there's loads of segments out there on sure. children and nutrition and whatnot. You just have to, you have to look for them. Yeah. This has been an incredible interview. Well, yes. thank you. Yes, this has been are. fun. Yeah, you're quite lively. I am quite lively. And it's Lyme disease month. I don't know when this is airing. So yeah, it should, it, it's, it's pretty oh, easy to get passionate you. about Lyme, even oh, though it's no. a year round condition. It doesn't matter where you live. It is, it's, but we're, you know, I don't want to say we're celebrating Lyme disease, but we're connecting. I can't tell you how many more followers I've gained because I uh, see them come up that they have some information on their Facebook page about Lyme disease. And so, you know, I can't, I can't get my podcast to everybody but I have to, you know, reach out. I have to say, Hey, I'm out here. Come listen, have some fun, you know, and email me. If you, there's people that email me and they say, Hey, I want to learn about uh, kinesiology. I have one lady that has, and I'm like, okay, let me find it. Yeah. Well, well, it's it. so it's so amazing what has happened and that you can get information, you know, like I have great blogs and you know, I try to post a lot on Facebook and just information. There there is a lot of good information. Right. You know, just, I'm not saying yeah. there's some bad out there too, but really it's just a great wit time that people can take control of their healing and be in charge of their it care. Um, and it's and, more in mm -hmm. the last ten years. Yeah, it's absolutely. More. And, yeah. you know, when I first uh, became not well and I was searching for an answer and the Lyme thing came up, all of a sudden I'm looking and I'm, I'm just finding nilly willy stuff, you know, yeah. and I, you know, I've been told uh, that there was a reason that I became ill with Lyme and it's leading me to mm -hmm. all this woo woo stuff. And I'm, mm -hmm. just, you know, I'm just, I'm a facilitator. I love learning. Um, I, I love the aspect of what this has brought me and hopefully I'm making great connections with people out there and, and same, same for you, you know, yeah. and oh, and, I mean, you're bringing information to people and really trying to teach them, you know, you're, I, the, and I want to be really clear about this. I use holistic therapies but every one of my therapies that I use is not only evidence-based, it's got a boatload of evidence behind it. Right. I mean, you're not going to find a treatment. Uh, compare neurofeedback to medication studies. Go ahead. Do the research. Uh, we'll win every time. So, you know, it, there, there is a lot of evidence-based things that that's a whole other topic that is right. not being brought to the table um, because of money and the way that the system is being structured. Right. So right. you, and you people have need to, be, to know that they, they know, they and, need and they to can know be that. a consumer in their own. Exactly. Healthcare. 
Exactly. So whether it's for yourself or your child and, you know, I advise people and I tell people to check in with themselves mm -hmm. and feel like what feel, what does it feel like for you? Does this feel like this is the right path? Right. You know, you, sh you have to be ready for healing. And I know that sounds silly, um, but there's a mindset that has to come with it. And, and that's part of what we do. We try to wrap, you know, get you in that and give you the tools. Right. Um, it's not easy. And, no, and healing not. is not convenient. It okay. isn't convenient. It is not convenient. Convenient. You know, one of the one of the best documentaries I've ever seen, and it's one, it's not multiple series, it's called Heal. H E A L. Yes. 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 That brings it all it's into good. light of everything that you're talking yep. about. You can find it on Netflix. Mm -hmm. It's um, a good one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, you know what? We, yeah. we need to anyway. stop now. We, we could go on forever, but we, yeah. we really should stop because other people have to, um, that are listening, need to uh, go to work. Go to work, cook dinner, do something. Yeah. <laughs> if you're out in your car listening to this, yeah. and you need a note for why you're late to work. You can call one of us and we'll write it for you. <laughs> Too funny. <laughs> this is good. Funny. Everybody, thank you for listening to another episode of Living with Lyme. And I want you to uh, reach out and let me know if there's anything you want to hear about. You can reach uh, Dr. Roseanne, as I said, uh, drroseanne.com. Com. Com. Yep. D-R-R-O-S-E-A-N-N.com. There we go. And uh, a big thank you to all my sponsors. Uh, I've been really very, uh, very blessed to have sponsors help me pay for this uh, wonderful education series. And, uh, you know, until next time, peeps, be well. Take care. Be well.